Like you, I have several self-tapes playing in my mind simultaneously. One tape I listen to daily is labeled, I Have No Value. The No Value tape holds all my failures and regrets to remind me of the many lost opportunities to show that I do have value. Especially painful is remembering all the times I could have said something encouraging and instead was sarcastic, self-absorbed, or discouraging. And when this happens, the tape begins playing, reminding me of all the times I missed the opportunity to show some love. I become overwhelmed by remorse. I feel badly for the person not positively impacted with our interaction. And then I fall prey to the downward spiral of not giving any love to myself. Love represents our greatest ability to express power in our universe. As we discussed last episode, the universe is an extravagant gift of love. The power exhibited within the universe feels infinite, constantly growing and regenerating beyond what we humans can describe and comprehend. There isn't just a couple of galaxies, there's an untold number of galaxies. The earth doesn't just barely sustain us, for when the earth is treated well, it contains abundant and replenishing resources for our existence. There is no barely or limited in our experience with the universe. Now, how have we responded to this love? We have failed in many ways which upsets our quest for meaning. Look at the beautiful universe and you see amazing beauty and amazing trash. We humans create trash. But what does that have to do with love? It points to an ugly response to what Christ created. It also points to how we unlovingly trash people and trash ourselves. We have lots of trash to work through today to find true love. First of all, we trash the environment by undervaluing the gift. Start with the widest perspective possible and we realize we've extended our trash beyond the earth to the moon and even to Mars. The moon has over 400,000 pounds of discarded materials from man landings and countless probes sent crashing to the moon's surface at the end of their usefulness. Moving closer to earth, we find a mess orbiting our globe over 20,000 objects from useful satellites to discarded rockets circle the Earth continuously. As we look closer, we realize there are millions of small pieces of debris circling the Earth caused by collisions and explosions of equipment. There's literally a trash belt orbiting the Earth. Then we get to the surface of the planet where we have become masters of piling up trash. Let's just talk plastics. Many are familiar with a floating blob of plastics located in the Pacific Ocean halfway between the mainland U.S. and Hawaii, known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Millions of tons of plastics find their way to this ocean patch through various ocean currents each year. Due to this patch and the dispersed plastics throughout the ocean, over 70% of ocean animals have traces of plastics within them. Think about that as we move our perspective to inside our bodies. Yes, you are what you eat. This means and has been shown by scientists that most every human being in the developed world has traces of plastics in their bloodstream. We ingest these traces of man-made plastics through eating, through the air we breathe, and the water we drink contained in plastic bottles. Ugh! We eat our own pollution. Is this the right response to receiving this loving gift called the universe? Is that what we should do to the only pale blue dot we have seen in the universe? Is this how we reciprocate love to Christ? We have polluted every aspect of the universe that we have touched. Unfortunately, there is more trash to talk about. We trash people. We deny them value. Most of us have enjoyed the song, Somebody to Love by Queen, a great rock classic as Freddie Mercury cries out for love. Yes, we all crave love, yet it appears we crave hate as well. Rogers and Hammerstein taught us a source of this hateful desire in the song from the South Pacific entitled, You Have to Be Carefully Taught. The lyrics include, you've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose skin is a different shade before you are six, seven, or eight. Yes, most of our hate is taught. You watch the modern destruction of Afghanistan, Iraq, 
Syria, Yugoslavia, and many other countries caused by centuries of taught hate. This taught hate fuels a continuous cycle of violence which brings present meaning to an old fight. Most other countries still have categories of hate which separates groups, causes them to act towards each other bitterly, and often are fueled by vengeance. We learn to hate people on the other side of the tracks. We are taught to be suspicious of people who make more than we do. We are taught to be suspicious of people who make less than we do. We are to be suspicious of intelligent people. We are to be suspicious of people who are not intelligent, and on and on and on. We are taught very well to trash people. Four, people different than us, of course, have diminished value. And for many of us, we have felt the entire cycle. I personally have bullied other people and I have been bullied. How weird is that? I remember being merciless in my actions to others and remember clearly being treated without mercy. Is hate a more common experience than love? At times it appears so, but wait, the situation gets worse. We trash ourselves, we refuse value. The trash continues as we tear down the person who should be the easiest to love. Our self-hate generates itself through various experiences. First, some have lived through exceedingly difficult circumstances where the trauma of family dysfunction beat you into the belief that you are worthless. Others have suffered disappointments while your peers found success and you label yourself a loser. Some look in the mirror and realize you don't look like a supermodel and believe yourselves to be ugly. Mainly, we hold all the negative facts and statements collected in a lifetime and use them as an editorial on our being. We believe we are worthless, insignificant losers. And we tell ourselves this repeatedly and the self-fulfilling prophecy is never ending. This is the ultimate refusal to love. How are we going to clean up this mess? First, believe love is an unlimited resource. Don't hoard it. We can give away value to others while never diminishing our value. As we discovered in episode 3, love mirrors the expanse of the universe. If Christ gave us this extra extraordinary, ever-expanding universe as a gift of love, then the source of love is infinite. There is enough love for me, my family, my neighbors, the people in my country, all those other bad people I talked about in round one. I can freely give value to all those in my sphere of influence. Second, we must have confidence in what we see a gift of unconditional love. This unconditional love found within the character of Christ gives us value. We do not have to prove ourselves worthy to enjoy this wonderful gift. We have value because Christ has given us value through the gift of the universe. We do not earn this gift, we receive this gift, we are loved. The human race, Homo sapiens, has been shown love irrespective of color, religion, gender and actions. We have the autonomy as individuals to decide how we mimic this act of love. But third, we have to prioritize. We can easily experience an overwhelming feeling when we think about the global and national implications of loving the universe and the entire human race. Even though our ability to love is infinite, to solve the pollution of the universe and centuries-old hate will take the collective effort of governments and global institutions. Our expression of love should include efforts to educate and influence these global and national platforms towards a true expression of love. But as we do so, our most important task is to love ourselves by changing from within. We must learn to love ourselves through understanding the value we have as individuals. And we must learn to love those around us through recognizing their value. The loving gift of the universe provided by Christ compels us to mirror the love within our own spirit and in our actions towards ourselves and others. This is the second foundational beam in the journey to meaning. We must love and learn to draw upon the unlimited resource of love within us. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. 
Your homework this week, spend some time thinking through how you use love. Do you use love as a tool of manipulation, a weapon against your own self-esteem, freely for others? And also, remember you are loved so you can love. On Instagram, follow Reconsider Christ for timely reminders of what we are discovering and experiencing throughout season one. Next episode, we look at how the universe reflects Christ's sense of equality. It's amazing. Peace.